Hey guys, Ivan here and in this video we have a couple of very interesting stories and we are starting with this one, Brandon Harding. Now I talked about Brandon in my previous video, I was talking about whether he made progress from last year or not and also whether he's gonna win the pro card this season or not. Now if you wanna watch that, check out my previous video, but in this video we're gonna check out what he looked like at this show that he did and he didn't win the overall. So he won his class, but the overall was won by the guy standing next to him in this photo. I am not sure if this show was even a pro qualifier or not, but he didn't win a pro card. Now, as you can see right here in the caption, he says that his goal was to actually come in at 90%. I also listened to his coach, who just did a podcast with Fuad Abiyad, and he says that this was basically the plan. They wanted Brandon to come in at the first show at about 90%, so his conditioning can improve from show to show until he, hopefully, eventually wins that pro card. Now, he says here that he was 90%, but I think it's pretty visible. He didn't look 100%. I'm gonna show you some footage, I got a couple of videos of him from that stage, but this is the photo where you can clearly see that he wasn't completely in, and you can see it in his glutes. I'm not saying that he needs to have super shredded glutes to be competitive in classic physique, I'm just saying here you can see where conditioning wasn't 100%, and I'm sure it was visible in person in other areas of his body as well. Also, yeah, it looks like he isn't even flexing those glutes uh, right here in this uh, side chest pose. But, you know, side poses are usually the poses in which your glutes will look sharper even if they are not. It's harder to have shredded glutes from behind. From the sides, usually some separation is, is visible even when you are not completely shredded. And Brandon does know how to bring conditioning. I think last year he was pretty peeled. And at this show, he was okay. But again, he was at around 90%. He definitely could have been sharper. Now, in my last video, I was talking about whether he made progress or not. And I noticed some of you guys commented that he made a lot of progress in his back. And I gotta say, his back definitely did look much better than the last time on stage. But how much did it progress? It sure progressed some, but I think it was mainly posing. He really knows how to present his physique how to make it look even better than it actually is. And that is a really valuable thing in bodybuilding, a really valuable skill, I would say. Now, in this update from two days out, he said that he was 10 pounds heavier. Now, I was trying to see where did he progress, where did those 10 pounds go? Did it all go to his back, maybe? Well, as you can see, he's 90% here, so he will have to lose some more weight before he gets 100%. His weight at this show was 213 pounds, and he gets to weigh around 220 in the amateurs. So he has 7 more pounds to gain, but he's probably gonna lose around 5 pounds before he gets completely conditioned. So how much did he actually progress? Well, if you speak about the numbers, he gained probably around 5 pounds of muscle, which is a lot. It's not crazy, it's not like Hunter Labrada adding 20 pounds over a course of a year, or Nick Walker, whatever he did. You know, he's a classy guy, he doesn't have those crazy genetics. So 5 pounds for a guy like him over a course of a year, is, you know, okay, it's like average. I don't know how much work that he actually put in in that off-season, but five pounds is like pretty realistic. It's not great, it's not terrible either. So as I said, he was 213 pounds here. Let's say he loses five pounds before he gets completely shredded. That's 208 pounds, which means he has 12 pounds to gain before he reaches the weight cap in classic physique in amateurs. And then on top of that, he has another 10 pounds to gain gain once he turns pro, so that's 22 pounds to gain before he's actually a seriously competitive classic physique pro, if he has the right structure and if he actually maxes out his weight, he's going to be, I think he's going to be great, I think he has all the structure, but obviously his uh, muscle building genetics aren't exactly extraordinary, you can watch his YouTube videos where he talks about his cycles openly and he's doing way more than for example Chris Bumstead who is, who is gaining muscle so easily. So he, Brandon is definitely not that kind of a genetic freak. He does have the right structure, he has all the tools basically. It's just gonna take him a little bit longer. It's gonna take some more time. 
take a look at this video. So this is what I'm saying. He has the right structure. He has a very good looking shape, actually. And I'm sure, look at the glutes here when he flexes them. So yeah, his glutes were okay when he flexes them. Still, they could have been sharper, but his conditioning is okay. The back definitely does look better, but I think it's mainly a posing improvement. So this guy, he really knows how to pose, you know, in an artistic, classic way, but still he knows how to present his physique in the best light possible. And again, he has a pretty good structure. He reminds me of Logan Franklin a little bit, a smaller version of Logan Franklin. And I think he has even more potential than Logan if he adds all that muscle, which I'm sure he is going to do over the course of the upcoming years. I'm sure he can do it as long as he stays consistent. And with this structure, I think he actually has a good potential to be eventually like a top 10 Olympian in classic physique. Better than that, like top 6 or something like that. Who the hell knows? Who can predict something like that do i see him being an olympian one day i think i do i think he has all the tools necessary it's just gonna take him some time can he turn pro this year this season though well that's definitely a tough question it depends on who else shows up he needs to be a little bit lucky if you ask me for example this guy right here beat him not only because of conditioning yeah he was sharper but he has more muscle you know I think it's mainly visible in the in the legs and also in the arms. Look at the leg roundness here. I mean, it wasn't that big of a difference, but still the guy had more muscle. And there will be more guys like that, many more guys like that, who maxed out their, their classic physique weight cap. But we all know that it's not all about the weight. If you have a better structure, if you have a better shape, you're gonna look more impressive, you're gonna look more classic, and you will beat bigger guys than you. Can Brandon win that pro card this year in 2022? Tell me in the comment section, guys, what do you think? If you guys are having trouble staying focused during the workout or you think you could bring it to another level as far as intensity and effort, which I'm sure everybody can improve, I will suggest to you Vintage Blast, pre-workout by the Old School Labs. The link is down below, you can choose one of so many great flavors and if you use my code EVAN, you get a 15% discount. Also, if you guys want to support my channel by doing more than liking and subscribing, which is also a great help, but if you want to do something extra, this will definitely be of a great help so thank you guys all right next let's talk about our current mr olympia champion big Ramy, with a most recent physique update yes another one posted by dennis james we have some training footage as well but as you can see right here at 16 freaking weeks out of mr olympia Big Ram is pretty much in shape as you can see Milo Archer says his conditioning is good for four weeks out so if he looked like this at four weeks out he would be like okay that's fine he can get peeled in four weeks and I would agree with that he definitely does look very conditioned I mean Big Ramy, his issue is conditioning but right now he's really lean and it looks like he stayed very lean and he stayed very focused on training, on eating and everything throughout the entire year. So this might actually be the best version of Big Ramy that we ever saw, like Chad Nichols announced. And Chad Nichols announced something similar about Ronnie. And he was right that time. Is he gonna be right again? I don't know. We'll see. But it looks like Big Ramy is not going anywhere from that Mr. Olympia first spot. I don't think the politics, the fact that he skipped that Pittsburgh Pro guest posing or anything like that can, can really stop him from winning again. And the other competitors, I don't think any of them are really as complete, as big and as good as Big Ramy. So I don't really see anybody challenging Ramy this year. He's pretty established up there. As long as he brings at least like 90% conditioning, he's probably gonna win. So as you can see right here, once again, he's very lean. I mean, he has a proper eight pack. You can see all the abs and they are really prominent. You can see the conditioning, especially in that chest shoulder area where he really has some really nice separation, some cuts. His skin looks very thin. You can see a lot of vascularity. So I'm pretty sure Big Remy is probably gonna bring the best conditioning we ever saw this year and i really doubt that they would uh, play with his size you know i don't think chad nichols would downsize big grammy for the sake of conditioning 
Chris Asito, though, did that to Big Remy in 2016, and Big Remy didn't didn't look, you know, as as Big Remy usually does. He was obviously downsized. He was a little bit sharper. I mean, he was more conditioned. I have to say, he was conditioned, but wasn't worth it. Wasn't worth it for the lost size. It just didn't look right. It didn't look like Big Remy that we all knew. And I remember watching Louis Marco at a time and Louis Marco was trolling Big Remy. He was calling him Medium Remy. And I remember him saying that Big Remy didn't like that at all. He was mad at Louis Marco for calling him Medium Remy. And that was the, the last and the only year of Medium Remy. After that, he got much bigger. In 2017, he played second after Phil Heath. So in order for Big Remy to be impressive, he needs to live up to his name he needs to be big here's another photo that also Dennis James posted so again his conditioning looks great for 16 weeks out and if he's maintaining this without too much effort they're just gonna cruise until the Mr. Olympia get him slowly harder and drier while maybe even making more progress getting him even bigger more muscular so I'm expecting to see something really impressive this year Again, if he doesn't bring at least 90%, he has a chance of losing, and I think last year he wasn't at his best, they still gave it to him, like they gave to Jay Cutler in 2007, even though he probably didn't deserve it, however, Big Remy did deserve it, I think, but it wasn't a clear-cut win, and if he fails with conditioning or anything this year, they will probably take it away from him, like they took it away from Jay, so in order to ensure him staying at the top, he needs to bring, he needs to bring something good and I think that's exactly what he plans on doing I'm really curious though what do you think is there anybody in that uh, let's say top six or even top ten potentially challenging big Remy seriously this year I don't know Nick Walker Hari Chupan Brandon Curry William Bonac uh, Andrew Jack do you guys see anybody really challenging and beating big Remy this year or do you think big Remy will stay at the top even this year Whatever your thoughts are, guys, tell me in the comment section down below. All right, next we have Urs Kaletinski, also at 16 weeks out of Mr. Olympia, giving us a proper physique update. So as you can see, he looks pretty big, right? I mean, he looks pretty huge. I'm sure this guy maxed out his weight in IBB Pro League. Compare this size to, to that of Brandon Harding, for example. It's not even comparable. I mean, this guy is so big, so massive. He could do the open if he really wanted to. I'm not sure how much he's pushing his body right now in order to be this big, but if he wanted to, I'm sure he could probably do the open. I don't know if he has the structure for it because his arms are kind of small, but he has the ability to grow muscle, that's for sure. Now, as far as conditioning, he, he stayed very lean in the offseason, and uh, I think this is great conditioning for 16 weeks out. I have no doubt that he will be peeled as he usually is, as he was at the Arnold Classic, he was shredded. I think he was probably a little bit too flat because he went a little bit overboard, so I'm sure he will fix that mistake for the Mr. Olympian. Maybe this time around he will manage to beat somebody like Ramon Dino or Terence Ruffin, but I don't think I can see that. Personally, I have Ramon Dino placing ahead of Urs and probably Terence as well. I think Urs is probably going to be around top 4. Which, I mean, is a phenomenal achievement, being top 4 in the world in classic physique, that's, that's freaking insane. But, like, to be higher than that, he would have to beat some of the really, really talented guys like Ramon Dino, Terence Ruff and Chris Bumstead. And there are some new guys who are looking really promising, like uh, that guy, uh, his IG name is Classy FM, his name is Fabian. Uh, also, Gabriel Zanzanelli, the Brazilian guy. So there is a lot of new talent knocking at the door trying to crack that top 5, top 6. So Urs has to bring his absolute best ever in order to just stay in that top 4, which I think he will succeed. I think he is that good. Whatever you guys think though, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to my channel guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye bye.